Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk all about phoneme manipulation. Now phoneme manipulation is a phonemic awareness activity that is a little trickier for students. I actually did about a month or two ago an entire phonological awareness sequence right here for students ages four to nine and it kind of walks you through the different phonological and phonemic awareness activities from easier ones to more difficult and these fall towards the end of that sequence. So if you want to know more about that, go ahead over there and grab that scope and sequence. But my goal for today's video is to share what phoneme manipulation is, the three different types we usually focus on with students along with some examples, and then some activities that you can do with your students that are fun, engaging, and effective to help students practice this skill. So if you are ready for this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. Okay, so phoneme manipulation is where we want students to manipulate the individual sounds they hear in spoken words. And just like any phonological or phonemic awareness activity, this can be done with our eyes closed, meaning we don't need to see any graphemes or letters, this is all auditory. And this is really helpful for students as they decode and encode words. Particularly, I love to practice this phonemic awareness skill when I'm teaching my students in first and second grade about consonant blends either at the beginning of words or at the end of words. Um, sometimes our consonant blends can be tricky for students because we do know that those sounds are individual, meaning a blend has two or three different sounds, um, but they kind of all blend together, hence why they're called blends. And it can be difficult for students to identify each sound, especially during spelling and encoding, right? They might hear train, and they know that chur, chur, chur sound, but they can't separate it. So when we're practicing skills like phony manipulation, not only are we segmenting the sounds to hear each individual one, but then we're doing things like adding sounds, deleting sounds, and switching or substituting sounds. So to kick this video off, the three main types of phony manipulation we do with our students include phoneme addition, phoneme deletion, and phoneme substitution. To go through an example of each one, for phoneme addition, we can add phonemes or add sounds to the beginning of words, to the end of words, and we can also add it somewhere in the middle when we're thinking about something like a consonant blend. So for example, this might sound like, everyone say the word lip. Lip, add f to the beginning. What word do you have? Flip, say pot, pot. Add s to the beginning. What word do you have? spot. If we're adding phonemes to the end of a word, it might sound like everyone say bell, bell. Add t to the end. What word do you have? Bell, t, belt. And if you're adding a phoneme to the middle of the word, like with a consonant blend, I would tell students to say the word cap, cap. Add l after the k. What word do you have? K, l, ap, clap. When working on phoneme addition with my students, I definitely work on adding phonemes to the beginning and to the ends of words first, and then I only really focus on adding it to the middle when we are specifically working on consonant blends. Now, phoneme deletion works in a similar way, where we want students to delete phonemes from either the beginning, the middle, or sometimes that second phoneme in a consonant blend. We will want students to delete it and listen to what is left. For example, I would tell students, say the word stop. Stop, take away, s. What are you left with? Top. Say clock, clock, take away k, lock. And you'll see me doing this because I do often use hand signals. Either sometimes we go, say stop, take away s, or sometimes I just put my hands out like this, say stop, take away s. But I like showing how they're taking away something um, instead of adding something. And if you wanted to do that with phoneme addition, you could do something similar by having them put up one hand and say lip, add f, flip. This also helps them because they can go ahead and put the beginning phoneme, or if we are doing an end phoneme like bell, add t, they can add it to the end so they can see where these phonemes are coming in. And then we can also do phoneme deletion from the end of a word, say pant, take away t, pan. And then just like with clap, you can also do phoneme deletion from that second blend. Again, I often do that when we are specifically working on blends. Um, so you could have students say clap, take away ooh, cap, slide, take away ooh, 
side. It's a little tricky, but with practice, students really can isolate those phonemes, remove one, and it really is just helping them think about all the different sounds they hear in words. And lastly, with phoneme manipulation comes phoneme substitution, which is the trickiest of the three skills. Um, but essentially, students are going to be deleting and adding phonemes to a word. So for example, you might have students say cat. Change k to b. What word do you have now? Bat. So there you can see students have to have the word cat. They need to take away the k. We're left with at. And then they need to add b to make bat. So here they're really doing both of those addition and deletion skills at one time to make a new word. That example changing cat to bat would be initial phoneme substitution, right? They're changing up that first sound, but you can also do this with medial sounds as well as final sounds. For example, you might say the word clock, change ah uh to i. What word do you have? So clock changes to click. You can also substitute final sounds. Say the word pal. Pal, change ul to k. What word do you have? Pack. So there you have some examples of phoneme addition, phoneme deletion, and phoneme substitution, as well as some of the wording I use with my students when we practice these skills. Also, just side note with the hand movements, I am realizing now that um, I might be flipped for you, but if I was doing a beginning sound, I was doing the beginning of the word, and if I was doing an ending sound, I was taking away the ending of the word. So. It might just be backwards on camera. All right, now that we know what phoneme manipulation is, as well as some examples to use with our students, let's talk about some activities that make this effective and fun for our kids. So I don't know about you, but for me, the most difficult part about getting these activities started is just having enough examples of phoneme addition and deletion and substitution to actually do with my students. So in the SJT Literacy Club, I have a section under phonological awareness. Uh, it says phoneme manipulation, and when you go there, you can download a bunch of these different cards. And these cards are actually meant for teachers, um, and they do have an image that you can show to your students so they can identify the image to help them. And then you have the prompts there for them to add, delete, or substitute words. So here's just an example of what they look like. Um, for each one, here's phoneme addition, and they're all labeled in there by uh, addition for the initial phoneme, addition for the final phoneme, uh, deletion for final and initial phonemes, substitution for initial, medial, and final. So they'll all be in there so you can tell your students um, what you'll be working on. And it is important to always make sure you're following that I do, we do, you do. When you're introducing phoneme addition for the first time, you want your students to hear you do this a few times. Um, so that way they understand what they're doing and they can kind of hear it before they try it on their own. And even within that, if you were doing phoneme addition to the initial sound, um, you will then want to, again, kind of reteach, follow that I do, we do, you do, when you then change it to the final sounds. Because it is going to be different for students and it might be a little tricky at first. But here's an example of what these cards look like. This first one says, say, tie. And so I will often, since these have the little um, image here to show students, I will show this under there for them, like under a doc cam, or I'll just display it on the board. Um, say tie, and again, they say tie. Add mmm, what's the word? And this is final phoneme edition, so tie, mmm, time. And then we would have another one, say bow. Bow, add t, what's the word? Boat, say tray. Tray, add mmm, what's the word? train. And then like I said, I have them for the other skills as well. Here is phoneme deletion for the initial sound. Say deer, deer, take away d. What's the word? Ear. Say dice, dice, take away d. What's the word? Ice. Say box, box, take away b. What's the word? Ox. Just for some examples. So these cards are available in the SJT Literacy Club for all members. Um, also, by the time this video is up, I did go ahead and list these on TPT. So I will have that linked down in the description below in case you want to quickly grab these cards for your own reference. But for some other activities, I love to use something tactile like cubes or like colored chips. Um, I've mentioned this before, but often when doing a phonemic awareness activity with any sort of tile or cube or chip or whatever, uh, you can have them all be the same color. When we get this far into phoneme manipulation, I really like to have a different color for each separate phoneme. Um, so for any of the same like s sound, if this had two s 
sounds. They could be the same color, but if it is a different, unique phoneme, I like to have it have a different color. This really helps students visualize that each phoneme, each block is its own sound, um, especially as we are manipulating them. So when using chips or cubes or anything, I would do this the same way. I would have students say the word top, top. Show me top with your cubes or your counters. T -op. They'd all be different colors. This doesn't mean that like, you know, everybody has to have an orange for their tea. They can all be different for students, um, but they should all, again, they're all individual different sounds. T -op. So they should have different colors. Then I would say add s. What word do you have? Stop. And here the tactile movement of them actually taking that phoneme, right? This is representing their phoneme and adding it here helps them see how they are adding it. Same for deletion. Make the word stop. 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 Take away s. What word do you have left? Top. Now when I was just showing that, I did have these all clipped together um, to show that they're all like connected as a word. Sometimes that can be a bit of a distraction and actually take longer for your students. Just as a little uh, FYI, especially in like first grade, they spend so much time putting it together and taking it apart. So you can easily just have students move these upright on their desk, right? And then they can just simply remove it and add a new one. And same with phoneme substitution, by the way, especially with phoneme substitution, because we do a lot of um, medial substitution where I'm having them take that sound out and put a new one in, changing, you know, tab to tub, something like that. So I'd have them make the word tab, t ab, change a to a. Uh. So they have to look at them. Okay, I'm changing that middle sound. It very quickly lets me, the teacher, see, okay, they segmented those phonemes. They identified the medial one. They were able to move it. And now we are putting a new one in to make a new word. Colored chips, colored cubes, these are going to be your friend for this type of activity. Another thing I like to do specifically for initial phoneme addition is use something like a spinner here. Now you can go online. I typed in, um, what did I type in? I typed in like free name spinner or something, free spinner. And a ton of them came up. This one specifically is called Wheel of Names. And underneath it, you just type in, um, it's like for a giveaway winner. Like if you're picking a random winner of a giveaway, but you just delete the names and you type in some sounds. So here I put S, T, M, N, P, and S, H. Um, these would be sounds that your students should know, of course. And then I would just throw up a rhyme, R-I-M-E, like an end of the word, O-P, op, on the board. And then I would just have students one by one come up. Maybe they press the spinner. Let's see what we land on here. We land on T. So as a whole group, we would say, okay, let's add it to op, t, op. What's the word? Top. We do it again, spin. And then as you can see, we just continue to do this over and over. But this just makes it a little more engaging to practice that phoneme addition. Throw up any sort of word family that you're working on with your students on the board. Have that spinner ready. They can spin and add, spin and add. And then your students can determine, is it a real word or is it a nonsense word? And you can discuss. For phoneme deletion, a fun activity with my students brings back these cubes or these chips of some kind. Um, and here you're going to want to introduce some sort of hungry monster. Monster. So you can call this Monster Munch, you could call it Hungry Harry, you could call it Newt the Nibbler. Once I've decided kind of what this is going to be called, let's pretend it's Monster Munch. I will usually, to introduce this, throw up a picture on the smart board of like a monster, just clip art of a monster, and I'm like, this is our Monster Munch game. He's hungry for some initial phonemes, and this is where we're going to be practicing where the monster munches and deletes that initial phoneme. So I might say, Everyone make the word clock. K -l -a -k. Now I'll say monster munch. K -k. And this is where the monster, and they can pretend to be the monster. They can, you know, go all out with their hand and gobble up that. K -k. What are we left with? Lock. And you can do this over and over. And instead of students just moving the cube, you know, nicely, they can monster munch it, or they can be, you know, n newt the nibbler, or whatever they want to be, and they can remove it. It just makes it a little more fun for your students. And before I dive into the last activity that is great for this type of phoneme manipulation, I have mentioned this in, I think, almost every one of my phonemic awareness activity videos. So I want to make sure I mention it again. While these activities can be done completely with our eyes closed, they can be done with cubes and chips and all of that, they also can be done 
with graphemes. So a lot of times, especially when we're doing this phoneme substitution that I'm going to share in a minute, we do things like word chains and word ladders, and this is going to let our students actually see the graphemes as we change them. There's no harm in showing students what letters are represented by these sounds. In fact, it's been shown to strengthen the connection between phoneme and grapheme. So while I would definitely start doing these activities simply auditory, using these cards, having students do it over and over and over, we might want to add in some magnet tiles. I might just do it up at the board. I don't need them to do it just yet at their desks. I might put the graphemes, the magnets up on the board and say, okay, again, I'll use this example, clock. Let's spell clock here. Take away k. What are we left with? Lock. So students, even if they couldn't read that word, they can still do the activity by taking away the sounds, but I'm also showing them those letters so they can strengthen that relationship. So just as a reminder to go ahead and introduce those graphemes to your students. All right, last but not least, I just mentioned these, but my favorite activity for phoneme substitution is to do word ladders. Now, I actually have a bunch of word ladders included in the SJT Literacy Club, as well as over on TPT and on my store site. And here I have the word letters in two different ways. Here is an example of a CVC version, and I have them for tons of different uh, phonics skills, from CVC words to digraphs, to blends, to diphthongs, etc. It just goes on and on, and there's a few in each pack. So here students can either start at the bottom or the top of the ladder. Um, if we were starting at one, I have images here. So students have to determine what the image is. So here we have wag and they would write it down, right? So here we're introducing the grapheme, but this could also be done with the phonemes as well if you wanted to use this as an example for a word chain. So wag, now students would look at the next one, wig, what changes here? Here we change that initial phoneme, the a to i, wig. Next is pig. What changes here? The initial phoneme. Then pin, pan, and can. So here again, students can go from top to bottom or bottom to top as they change phonemes and substitute them to complete the word ladder. Now also for each of these word ladders, I have another option and that is a riddle word ladder, which I love for vocabulary development. So here it's going to include the same words, but you can see over here on the left, there's actually riddles that I would read aloud to my students and we could do this together. Um, a dog does this with his tail, wag. So we'd have to think about what it actually means and we'd have to write it down. Something you wear on your head. Now there could be so many options for that, hat, cap, but students have to look at the first word and determine that they're only substituting one phoneme. So what could it be? Wig. Then a farm animal who loves mud, pig, a sharp tool you can use to hang things on a wall, pin, a tool to cook with, pan, and soup is found in here, can. So those are just some examples of word letters I've created. Um, again, with the picture images being one that students can do more independently. And then the riddle one I always do with students so we can talk about each word and clear up any misconceptions, etc. But if you're looking for more word letters, I would simply think about the skill you're working on. Uh, and I would just type in digraph word ladders, for example, if that's what you're looking for, and you'll probably find a bunch online. Uh, just to give you some examples for that auditory process to get students switching and substituting phonemes. All right, so there you have a bunch of different activities that you can do with your students to help them practice phoneme manipulation. Again, with phoneme manipulation, we are adding phonemes, deleting phonemes, and substituting phonemes, which is great for our students, especially when they are decoding and encoding new words. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.